Hey you! Yeah you! Have you ever wanted to read input from the player in your video games? Have you found Game Maker's built-in keyboard check, mouse check, and gamepad check functions to be a little bit lacking? Because if so, boy oh boy have I got the thing for you. Juju Atom slash Input is a comprehensive cross-platform input manager for Game Maker. Input is a robust, feature-packed input library that unifies keyboard, mouse, and gamepad control all under one umbrella. It handles hot swapping, rebinding, gamepad type detection, player gamepad assignment, thumbstick, min-max, dead zones, etc. all without you lifting a finger. This library strips away the boring, repetitive task of getting every gamepad for every platform set up perfectly and accelerates the development of your game. I have no idea how professional advertisers do it because I am already out of breath just by reeling off those couple sentences. Anyway, hello all the crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. And let's talk about input. So, jokes aside, everything that I rattled off in that little uh, pseudo-marketing pitch, all of that is indeed true. So if you've ever gotten tired of trying to account for both uh, keyboard and mouse input as well as gamepad input, or if you've ever tried to implement um, keyboard rebinding, control rebinding, and your game and thought it was the most arduous thing ever, or if you've ever had to do any other manner of things related to uh, player input detection in your game and you thought that it was a bit of a chore, Juju Adams has you covered. So input has all sorts of features that can be useful for you making your game, and you can see a brief list of them here, and I will probably be going over a lot of them in future videos, but today let's just go and do some basic setup. Uh, you can find input in the, uh, the GitHub repository that is on screen right now. I will have a link to that down in the video description. Uh, it contains some other helpful links such as the, uh, the documentation, which is actually huge. Uh, there's a link to Juju's Discord server, and most importantly, we have over here in the releases section a whole list of releases. So at the moment, the current version of input is 601 beta. Um, in all likelihood, uh, this is a uh, this is a system that will continue to evolve over time. And uh, at the point where you are watching this video, it will it may or may not be something else. Um, it may or may not have received a few updates. Uh, regardless, you can uh, you can read over the the change log if you want. You can go and download the. Uh, input 601 beta YYMPS. Uh, you can open it up. Apparently I've already downloaded it at some point. Anyway, I don't care. Um, you can go and uh, drag it into your, your Game Maker project. I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be showing this off and doing some initial setup with my usual my usual test bed, basic like basic game basic Game Maker project which can which features a few controls and some um, some, you know, actions that the player can do and that sort of thing. Uh, so we can go and drag that file into the Game Maker IDE. It's going to ask us if we want to import the package. Uh, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to include both the, uh, the included files and the actual input folder. Um, the input folder contains all the code. The included files contains a, um, among other things, a, uh, a list of all of the controller types featured in the SDL2 database. And that's important because different types of controllers have different IDs and they, uh, the buttons on them map to, map to different input commands. And the SDL2 database basically tells the, uh, the game engine essentially which buttons map to what, which is easy enough if you have like a bog standard Xbox controller or whatever, but if you have some weird off-brand third-party controller, um, it's important to, uh, to make sure that the database knows what all the buttons are. Anyway, so that imported all this code into Game Maker. With this one library, the uh, the size of the uh, the code base in this demo project went up by about a factor of a hundred. Input has about ten thousand lines or so of code in it. It's pretty big. Anyway, so this is going to require a little bit of initial setup. I'm going to open up the input folder um, and leave in the configuration. Um, there's so many of these now. I'm going to have to actually look. Uh, input config verbs. This is what I'm looking for. Uh, this is where I'm going to define all of my default default controls. So input works a little bit differently the way that you may be used to input working regularly in Game Maker. So instead of saying keyboard uh, check and then you might say like VK space or whatever, hard coding the space bar as the key that you're checking for. Um, input works on a principle of different verbs, which are uh, actions that the player can do. And those can be related to um, diegetic physical things that you might do in the game, such as moving up, down, left, right, or casting a spell or shooting a gun. Or they can be more general actions such as accept or pause or even more specific actions such as a quick save or take a screenshot or that sort of thing. 
So, uh, I would like to get rid of some of this yellow and red underline, so I'm gonna go real quick, go and uh, turn Feather off. Um, it should go without saying that uh, none of the uh, none of the things that Feather's complaining about here are actually important, but Feather currently has a few um, a few opinions about things like uh, function arguments that I don't think are particularly helpful in this case. Anyway, you can see here in input config verbs that it comes with a, a number of defaults, and uh, that's going to be broken down into three categories for keyboard and mouse, for gamepad, and for touch. Uh, touch is for things such as, uh, you know, mobile devices and uh, devices with a touch screen. Um, I do not have any way to make use of this right now, so I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, I will, however, show off the, um, the automatic handling of a keyboard and mouse input as well as gamepad input. I'm going to whip out the camera and tripod, and you're going to be able to see me uh, switching back and forth between different input devices, um, you know, in person. So I'm actually going to get rid of all this. And I'm going to rewrite it all from uh, basically from scratch. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think I won't. I won't bother with touch at all. Touch is just going to have to have to be a story for another day. Maybe for a future video, I'll I'll set it up so that I can actually show that off. Anyway, um, some basic verbs might include um, as we had before. Up uh, can be input binding. Key, and I think I'll make uh, up by default word uh, W, so we're going to be walking around with Wasty. Um, down, likewise, can be S. Um, left can be A, and right can be D. Um, let me make sure that all these are... Uh, are lined up because that makes me happy. So each of the verbs that we're defining here, up, down, left, right, whatever, each of these are going to have what is a, what is called a binding assigned to them, and the bindings are what is actually returned by the input underscore binding functions, and that can refer to different things. That can refer to a um, a keyboard key. That can refer to a mouse button. That can refer to a gamepad button. That can re refer to a gamepad axis, which is one of the thumbsticks. Uh, some other things that you can do, um, you can interact. You can interact with NPCs in this demo. I'm going to call this, um, how about just interact, input, binding, key. And this can be, I think I set it to VK space. Uh, something else you can do, at least this will play an animation. It won't actually do anything in this game because this isn't a real game. This is just a demo. Um, you can cast a spell. And I believe I had that on the... Um, Word C key. And lastly, just to drive the point home a little bit, uh, we can, um, I don't have like a pause menu or anything set up like that, but I can say, how about quit? Input binding key. Not input binding empty, input binding key. Uh, VK escape. I'm just going to leave it here for now. I won't fill in gamepad yet. I won't deal with the, the alternate um, inputs for things such as up, down, left, right yet. Uh, but I will start going through uh, going through my player's player's step event and replacing all of the different uh, manual keyboard checks uh, that you might have to do. Uh, for example, instead of saying if keyboard check vk underscore left or keyboard check ord a, I'm just going to say input check. And this function is going to take the name of the verb, uh, which in my case is what what was this left. I think that was the left one. dx equals minus one. That, I think that's going to the left. Uh, input check. Uh, this one is going to be up. No, that's not. That's going to be right. Uh, up is going to be y uh, minus equals one. Input um, check up. Input check down. And we should be able to start with this. And uh, now. Um, instead of uh, checking for, uh, instead of manually checking for different uh, hard-coded keyboard keys, I can use WASD to walk around. And that's pretty nice. So, uh, the other verbs in the game, so the other actions like casting a spell or talking to someone or whatever, uh, those are still, uh, still using the hard-coded keyboard keys. Um, I cannot yet, and I don't have the camera out yet, but I cannot yet use the arrow keys to walk around simultaneously with the, um, with Wasty. Um, if you want to be able to do that, 
Uh, you probably saw this in the uh, the default version of this um, of this code file. You can say input binding key uh, just on its own, or you can create a uh, an array, and the array can contain the um, can contain multiple input bindings. So we can say input binding uh, key instead of uh, the different letter keys on the keyboard, we can say VK up, down, left, right, whatever. And uh, up can be up, down can be down, left, and right. And now, um, if you assign the uh, the array of these different input bindings to the, uh, to the up verb, if I were to run the game again, uh, we will be allowed to simultaneously use WASD or the, uh, the arrow keys to walk around should you want should you want to do that, uh, because I know that uh, some people will prefer to use one over the other. Most Probably most people who are used to PC, keyboard, and mouse will will be using WASD at, at this point, but some people who may be uh, like left-handed or um, grew up playing like different games on different systems might might use the arrow keys. Anyway, uh, now that we've, uh, we've covered that, I, I'm going to go and replace some of the other, uh, some of the other verbs. So uh, keyboard check uh, casting frame, I can say input check, uh, what was it, cast spell. Uh, and these, uh, these verbs are strings, by the way, so you're going to take the, the verbs as a string. If you would prefer, um, you can make these, uh, if, you, if you don't want to risk misspelling these uh, strings containing the verbs or anything, you could assign these to like macros or something like that. And that way you get like code autocompletion helps and text highlighting, highlighting that sort of thing. Anyway, I can say keyboard check uh, cast underscore spell. Um, I apparently was not doing it in this demo already, but you can also say um, input check, and then you can see there's a whole bunch of other um, versions of this function. But the one that I'm interested in interested in at the moment is going to be pressed, uh, which is going to be the analog of keyboard press, mouse press, uh, gamepad check press, that sort of thing. And that's going to detect a, uh, a verb when the uh, on the frame that the button goes down. And there's also input check released, uh, as well as all of these other input check uh, doubles. So if you want to check for a double button press, input check long, that sort of thing. I think for now, I'm just going to go with input check pressed. And down here, I think this is the last one. Um, Keyboard check press space. I can say input check pressed. Uh, this was that I call interact. See, this is the uh, this is my other problem, which is that I don't. All right, it's interact. Um, I don't ever remember what I actually named the verbs, which is a little annoying. And then um, in a uh, in user land, I don't think um, I have any other manual input uh, detections in the game. Do I? I feel like I do. Um, here we go. Yes, I do. And that should be all of them. Uh, that should be all of the manual, manual keyboard checks. So I can run the game now. And at the end of all that, we will be back to exactly where we were the last time. Hello. Yes, I do, in fact. They're, uh, good source of protein. Uh, what was the other one? C for casting a spell, so we can do that. And lastly, I haven't done this yet, but if you uh, if you want to do the uh, escape to quit the game thing, if input check, uh, we can say quit. Let's just call game end at the bottom of the player step event, and that will allow us to uh, use the escape key to quit the game. All right, how fun! It's worth noting that the uh, the special um, input of Alt F4, uh, that is not something that you would ever have to configure in your game yourself. That is a, uh, when the Windows API creates the game window, um, it will do certain things. Alt F4 will automatically simulate a click of the close button. Um, I think there's a few others. Uh, Alt Enter will force the game into full screen, force the game to toggle full screen or window. Um, at least if the game allows uh, full screen and, and window switching. So that's not something you have to manually implement into the uh, into game maker or into input or anything like that. So that's a uh, that's some basic verb setup. I uh, did say I would talk about game pads next. So when it comes to game pads, uh, we can um, 
we can basically create a mirror here. Uh, so up can be defined as, let's say, um, input binding gamepad button. Um, I'm gonna say gp underscore uh, pad, pad d for now. Uh, you may or may not wish to also include the like the gamepad axes, so the, uh, the left analog stick or so. I'm gonna get to that in a minute. Uh, down, input binding gamepad button, uh, gp pad, um, oh, that should be pad up, not pad down. Let me fill, the, fill in the rest of these manually. All right, so for the time being, I have uh, gp underscore pad u, so up, down, left, right on the d-pad uh, for regular old movement. I have the uh, face button one, which is going to be the A button on Nintendo and Xbox controllers. I believe it's the circle. Is it circle or cross on the, on the PlayStation controllers? All right, I had to dig my DualShock 3 out of the closet for this one. Uh, GP face one is going to be the cross button on the PlayStation. Um, GP face two is going to be the B button on Xbox and Nintendo controllers and the circle on, on PlayStation. Uh, quit GP underscore start. That is obviously the... Uh, the start button. So before I uh, before I go whip out the camera and tripod to drive home the point that you can use this to seamlessly switch back and forth between uh, gamepad and um, and keyboard and mouse input without any effort on your part, uh, I'm going to talk about gamepad axes first. So that's going to be uh, using the left analog stick, for example, to walk around. Um, again, we can, if you want both the D-pad and the analog stick to work for walking around, uh, set the up, down, left, right verbs to an array, and I'm going to say input um, binding gamepad axis, and I'm gonna have to do a little bit of work to remember which axis is going in which direction. Up is gonna be left vertical, uh, inverted is true, down is gonna be left vertical false, uh, left is gonna be, uh, left horizontal true, right is gonna be left horizontal false. Up and left are the ones that need to be going in the negative direction. Okay, so this is gonna be GP, uh, axis, L um, left vertical true, left vertical false, uh, left horizontal true, and left horizontal false, and let's uh, let's close off these arrays. Okay, so now with those set up, I should be able to run the game, and I should be able to. Um, should be able to walk around with the D-pad on the 8-bit dough. I can also walk around using the, uh, the left thumbstick on the 8-bit dough. And that is, uh, that is our thumbsticks all sorted out. So now, because I said that I would show video proof that you can uh, switch back and forth between uh, keyboard and mouse and gamepad and whatever other input devices uh, seamlessly and with no effort, I am going to go track down my tripod, BRB. All right, yes, hello, I am a person that exists in real life. I unfortunately forgot to charge this control overnight, so I'm going to have to play with it plugged in, which is going to make the video a little bit hard. But if I were to run the game, I can I can walk around with the duck with the uh, the left thumbstick on, on the 8-bit dough. I can walk around with the duck with the D-pad. I can go and um, talk to you, or I can cast a spell on you rather because these buttons are tiny and I have big fingers, apparently. I can also walk around with the uh, with the keyboard and I can continue talking to you with the uh, the 8 bit dough. I can take this a little bit farther um, mix and match all you want and of course uh, when we're done the start button will close the game and that's going to be all for me existing in real life because I apparently also forgot to charge the camera's battery overnight and uh, that's also almost dead so that's the basics of input if nothing else uh, you can use this to um, to make a number of things in your life easier, you can have all of the verbs in your game just defined in one place, so that if you choose to change one of the default inputs for uh, for a particular action, you don't have to go hunting down for where it's been used in your code. You can use this to nice and seamlessly integrate gamepad and keyboard and mouse input. Uh, you can use this to nice and easily implement um, alternative bindings for different different verbs, such as walking around with the uh, the arrow keys and and the letter keys, and of course. Uh, as I alluded to, there is a whole bunch of different uh, other features that you can do with this library, and I will be getting to a lot of them in due time. Uh, feel free to shout out uh, things that you're particularly interested in, whether that's um, 
things like verb groups or uh, rebinding tends to be a rather hot button issue or uh, even gyro controls, I believe, have been implemented in input. There's a whole lot of fun. Now, a, a couple a couple additional notes, which I probably should mention. Uh, one, a lot of the times when you install a, uh, a game maker extension like this, uh, Scribble or uh, Chatterbox or that kind of thing, it's not immensely important that you um, that you update it whenever Juju or Line or whoever happens to uh, to put out an update for it. But in the case of input, part of the updates that that are made for it and are made available for it also do include additional. Uh, gamepad bindings for additional controller types, and it's a good idea in general to be on top of those. The list is pretty long, and if I were to open up the project's uh, data files folder and look inside the um, the SDL2 file, uh, you can see that there are hundreds upon hundreds of, okay, about 1,870 and change uh, total gamepads that are um, that are recognized by this database, and that includes both first party controllers, third-party controllers for uh, the major consoles, as well as just all kinds of other things. I, I spy with my, little, with my little eyes a uh, Sega Mega Drive controller right here. And it's generally a good idea to be able to, um, to keep on top of those uh, as new kinds of controllers are made and also as uh, previously unidentified controllers are added to the database. And on that note, if you do have a controller that is um, not included in the... Uh, the SDL database, do get in contact with um, Juju or Align, and they will uh, basically set you up with a test kit, which you can use to create the database entry for whatever type of controller you have. All right, uh, that's probably the, the big one. Uh, that's probably the major comment I have. Another thing that um, people sometimes, sometimes see about input and get worried about, and it really isn't as much of a problem as anybody, as anybody thinks, but, if, for example, you were looking at the uh, the show debug overlay, and you saw that once you added input to your project, it you're suddenly you've gone from like 3,000 FPS underscore real to like 1,500 FPS underscore real, and um, sometimes people think that's a, a bit of a big deal because it looks like a big drop. It's really not. If I were to open up, where is it? Oh, it's right here. If I were to open up the profiler in the debugger, and if I were to start profiling. And if I were to let the game do its thing for a little while, you would see that um, the input controller, which is basically the uh, the background object for um, which which collects all of the input from the game from the system, and it, it manages it and it figures out what to do with it by mapping it on, onto verbs and everything like that. Uh, you will see that the input controller object is taking up an entire um, half of a millisecond of frame time, and that is largely overhead that won't change throughout your project. If you have a lot of verbs, if you have dozens and dozens of, and dozens of verbs, then it will take a little bit longer because it'll, um, the input controller will have more verbs to process. But for the most part, this is a, this is a fixed half a millisecond or so, maybe a, a millisecond on a, on an older computer. This is a fixed amount, um, that is going to be, a fixed amount of time that's going to be taken up by the input system. And you really shouldn't worry about that slowing down your game or that suddenly becoming very big or anything like that. Um, because again, the system does have to do a number of things in the background and uh, it is affected in, in some amount by the, uh, the number of uh, input verbs that you're keeping track of. Hey. So if, you, uh, if, you, if your game used to be running at 3000 FPS underscore real and it, it drops down to 1000 FPS underscore real or whatever, don't worry about it. Um, I've, I've ranted many times in the past about why I wish Game Maker's FPS underscore real would... It's kind of misrepresentative of what it actually is, but uh, that's a story for another day. So that should be enough to get you set up with input. Uh, Juju has a lot of helpful libraries that I think are nice, but input is the only one that I really think is critical because of how much annoying um, keyboard and gamepad and other things that it handles for you. Again, links to where you can find this repository can be found in the video description. If you want my demo project containing input, I will also have a link to that in the video description. I do try to post about two game dev videos a week, one tutorial tutorial like this, and one let's make a game, currently a 3D wizard game, and in fact I am using input in that 3D wizard game. A couple weeks ago I did post an episode of that, which basically involved setting up input and um, getting all the controls in place. So if you're interested in anything of that nature, feel free to subscribe. 
I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. And if you felt like contributing anything, I would definitely appreciate it, because these videos do take a fair amount of work to make. Otherwise, I hope you find this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Sindra Larson, Manta Ray, Harold Guidry, Game Maker, Edward Holt, DJ Gibbles, and Army Armbuster for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.